Hi everybody, I'm Scott. Um, I wanted to just first thank the 2022 and 2023 Sylvia and David Steiner Speaker Series um, for helping put this on and fund Violet being here today. Um, this is also partially funded through ID8 and the CMU College of Fine Arts Dean's Office. Um, every time we offer the Activated Animorphs class, which I'm the instructor for, we are able to bring in guest artists. And this year, our special guest is Violet Mainborg, who I'm excited to introduce to you today. I also want to give a shout out to my TA, Caroline Yu, who has been working with us extensively this semester. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce this year's guest, Violet Mainborg, who is visiting to work with the Activated Animorphs. Today we were making prosthetics, we we're doing mold making, and next week we're going to learn how to apply them and do makeup designs that relate to that. Um, and so Violet has studied at the Pratt Institute and also has a BFA from um, the Cleveland Institute of Art back in 2021. Um, she has offered many fabrication workshops throughout the region and exhibited nationally and internationally at venues such as West Bath Gallery in New York City, the Holy Art Gallery and the Muse Galleries, both in London, UK. She was a part of Sculpture X up at Edinburgh University, which is not too far away, and also has shown at the Cleveland Institute of Art, among others. Um, these are my words, not Violet's, but Violet is a filmmaker, photographer, a sculpture artist, working with hyper-realistic and at times absurd depictions of grotesque bodily horror and monstrous mutations that are paired with playful camp glamour and themes of gender identity that border on both the sublime and the abject. I'll let Violet frame that better than I can. So Violet, take it away. Welcome to the stage. Thank you for that description. I'll have to use that in my artist statement and steal that. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming over for dumplings. Um, I'm just a, uh, a side effect and entertainment for tonight. Um, I had a great time. Thank you for all from the class today who are coming to see me talk. Um, gives a little more context to why I was there in the first place. Um, thank you, Scott, for letting me speak here tonight. Um, I'm going to go through basically what I do, why I'm here, and why it's important to me, um, and how I do it. Um, so first, a little bit about me. I'm an artist. I'm an animal lover. Those are my cats, Sabrina and Salem. Uh, Sabrina is six months old now, and she's probably at home missing me. Um, but that's my motivation. I get up in the morning sometimes, um, that and my art. So, and there's a photo from my undergraduate posing with one of my sculptures. So my undergraduate work was really focused on my gender identity because I was in the beginnings of my transition and I, I, I focused a lot on what that meant to me and how other people perceived me. And I realized that I didn't want to be known as that trans artist, you know, I wanted to be known as an artist because I'm a thousand different things before my gender identity, right? So I kind of moved away from that, but it, you know, there are a lot of feelings around transitioning and, you know, physical changes and mental changes and emotional changes and uh, exterior and internal battles, you know, that you have to battle and I think, uh, this piece I did for a, a, a sculpture with skin class, um, you know, explains, I was talking about more so like I went to Victoria's Secret to be fitted for a bra and I was called sir by the person in the waiting room. And I kind of made this piece to say like, what does it have to take? Like me getting a bra fitting at Victoria's Secret is like, Okay, all right, um, and then I made this robotic breathing latex blob. You know, this was my first kind of dipping my toes into animatronics and um, wounds and latex and skin realism. Um, I, the smell of latex was haunting me for about a year. Um, it's a very specific smell, if you know it. It was over everything. Um, but I've moved to silicone now, which is a lot more finicky and a lot more um, harder to work with, but it definitely gives me more realistic skin tones and all that. Um, so my th senior thesis for my BFA, um, I created a series of silicone 
kind of monsters, humanistic, humanistic animalistic sculptures um, set in a home environment that I built um, and thrifted some stuff from the store. Um, this was one piece. This was my second piece that I did. Um, I kind of, I, I, there's no words that can accurately describe the forms that come. I see chicken, I've heard, um, lizard, alligator, you know, all of it. And I was really thinking about how in, in society we view trans people or intersex people as these monsters, you know, in, in the way we used to view people as members of the LGBT community, like people used to view us as like sick or medically something was wrong with us, right? We used to be institutionalized because of how we were wired. Um, so I was really thinking about that in kind of like the 80s horror movie, B horror movies tropes of the exaggerated features, you know, the, the nudity with no purpose really other than to show boobs on television. Um, if anybody's ever seen Frank and Hooker, that is like, <laughs> That is, that film, I wrote about that film so much in my BFA thesis, like, it's incredible. If you haven't seen it, Frankenhooker. It's available on, it's available on YouTube and Amazon Prime. Um, this was uh, another piece that I did, Untitled Lady. Um, this one was kind of like the peak of what I was talking about, where this this animal, I, I, I didn't include a front, frontal view, but it's, 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 it appears though it's in pain. It's in pain. It's, um, it has this long flowing black hair and penises on the back. I forgot to give a content warning, but if anything, you know, there's gonna be some gore and some nudity. If you're like uncomfortable with that, feel free to leave and do what's best for you. Sorry, I forgot the content warning at the beginning. Okay, content warning now. <laughs> Caution, dicks. So this was another sculpture I created. It was an animatronic, tentacle-like creature that sat upon a dresser. Um, this was another kind of branching out into the world of animatronics and robotics and thinking about how I could make something come to life, right? Like I viewed, I would be at a kid at Disney World and be like, I want to make art that moves. Like I want it to have a mind of its own or to seem like it has a mind of its own. So these, these movements were randomized and it took about a semester to make. Um, you know, it, it's very phallic. A lot of my work was very phallic back in the day and I think that's just from the interpretation of it's coming from this place of gender but also it's just a tentacle. Like obviously the Freudian ideology has come through with that. This is Untitled Man Made, um, another sculpture that I did for my BFA in which I was thinking about how um, trans bodies are viewed as mutants and things that are dissected and put back together. I was online looking at a lot of like really terrible, terrible things said about trans people having surgeries and like hatchet wounds and all that. Um, and I wanted to build a piece that kind of surgically implanted all of these things. So I, 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 I sewed on high heels made of skin. I sewed on breast implants and, you know, the head is kind of like not, it's not personified really. It's just this blob in agony like raw. Um, and I, I, I wanted to talk about how, um, surgery can and sometimes is a part of people's gender transition and how that, how, how society can view some of those surgeries. Here's some close-up views of it. And there's another photo. I had a camera under the TV that was projecting the monster's own image and then there are a bunch of Twinkies on the floor because I was trying to kind of personify these, these, these creatures and I was like, well, they, they obviously like eating Twinkies. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Like, it was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it never happened. Um, so then I, I started moving into more photography. Um, as Scott mentioned, I went to Pratt Institute. I went to the film and video program. Um, I was really good at it and everybody told me, 
that's what you should do. You should be a videographer. You should be a filmmaker. And so I did that and I hated it. And because I loved making things, I loved making things with my hands. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do with my life. And I, I, I listened to people that didn't know what I wanted. And only I knew what I wanted. And I wanted to do sculpture. But photography has always been my first love. It's always what I love to do. And I love the idea of putting myself in this moment that can be captured forever and also display some of the pain and the feelings of longing, rejection, heartbreak, all these things. Because since I was a kid, I've always felt things way different. I've always told, been told, you're sensitive. Um, uh, now I know it's, about, it's because of a personality disorder. But it, it, these things, these feelings feel like they'll kill me sometimes. Sometimes I feel like the sadness is so great that if I don't express it in a way that other people can understand, I'm going to die. So I started doing these self-portraits, and this was at a lonely time in my life where I would just go to Party City, get a bunch of things, come home, and shoot these portraits. And it, it, it really took a turn into this artistic practice where I could display all of these feelings and be like, this is how I'm feeling inside. Don't you see, like, people never, I felt like people never really understood the way that I feel. Um, sorry, I keep, I don't know where to hold the microphone. Um, and then these, you've seen the green one, and that's actually not makeup. That's when I got my nose job, um, which is, kind of gross and kind of fascinating, but I like to throw that little tidbit in there because everybody thinks it's makeup, but that's real. Um, but I, you know, displaying this pain and displaying these images of like, like eat like a lady, you know, I had all these, I've, you know, as a woman, you have all these expectations of, oh, you're supposed to be this size and be, eat this and eat a salad and not, you know, I like a big burger. I'm gonna eat a big burger if I want a big burger. Like, I... And then I did these three portraits in film. Um, I did the middle one and then I was like, you know what, I could turn this into like a series about infidelity and adultery and like kind of tell a story through these portraits instead of it being just a single moment in time, I can use multiples and like tell a story through these portraits. Um, so this was a series I did and I, th I, I think it's pretty okay. <laughs> so I graduated um, with my BFA, and I was like, hell yeah. I got the thing I've been working for for seven or eight years, and now I have no idea what to do with my life. Um, I, I said in the summer of 2021, after I had just gotten my degree, I said, I feel like I'm just a giant human meatball. And so I started working on this sculpture, Inescapable Self, and it, it, I wanted to assemble this meatball of myself and kind of, you know, make it look like I was crushed in a crusher and all my body parts are coming out in every which way and like I'm wounded, but I still have that, that beauty that I, I radiate and people tell me I radiate, you know, so people can be like, gross, but also like cool, but also like, I don't know. Um, I felt lost for a long time after I graduated. Um, I didn't really know what to do because art school is supposed to teach you how to make art and then they touch on what to do, but they don't really tell you what to do when you graduate. They just give you your degree and say, good luck, goodbye. Um, and so this took about six months to make. I'll talk about the process a little bit later in the presentation when I talk about my process, but um, it's pretty big. It's 40 inches tall. It is very heavy. Um, it is silicone and it has a fiberglass shell on the inside. And this was most recently uh, exhibited in New Jersey somewhere, Studio Montclair in New Jersey. Um, and here are some close-up images. I've seen, I've heard a lot of um, comparisons about the wounds, what they look like, and it's always fun to hear people's interpretations of, of these abstract forms that I 
I basically paint with clay, you know, that's the way I look at it. I, I don't really, I, it's kind of very intuitive. A lot of my work is made very intuitively, just doing what feels right, doing what it needs, doing, putting this here because I feel like it needs it right here, not anywhere else. Um, and that's a, that's a thing that I, and then I got a fabrication job and I had access to a welder and metal and I started learning all these new things and so, I started working with hands. Um, I've done a lot of a lot of hands. I have a lot of silicone hands, and I started thinking about like, because I would come home every day, and my hands would just be dirty and cut up, and from working with metal and wood and everything all day. And I was just like, these hands have done so much. They've they've caused harm. They've hurt me and other people. They've built incredible things and they've also like caressed people and touched people and and I just love the fantasy of hands because hands have built everything that is around us and yet we kind of take them for granted right um I feel like sometimes and and this sculpture I was talking I I mean you can derive your own meaning from it I don't want to drone on too long but you know, when you have your hands behind your back and your fingers are crossed, it, 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 I was talking about more dishonesty trapped in this cage of barbed wire that's inaccessible from the outside. Um, and it's hanging, it's a hanging piece. Um, this was in New York recently, or last year, um, and the gallery hung it wrong and I was upset. But, um, you know, only so much you can do. Um, so this piece, um, Penn Station Camel Blues. I was talking about a relationship I had and after that ended, I touched on how feelings feel like they're gonna kill myself and a lot of, a lot of my life story involves self-harm and harming myself and you know, burning myself with cigarettes. I put out 20 to 30 cigarettes on myself and this piece was kind of putting an end to that and burying that time in my life because it, it, it had resurfaced and it had been like a decade and it was, it just, I was finally putting that era to rest. And I, I, I like to look at this piece as like a memorial of the person that I was, but still am kind of, because you know, that's always gonna be me, but I like to think I'm a better person nowadays. Um, so this piece is Preserving a Withered Rose. This is a piece I did in 2022. Uh, again, hands, again. Um, I like the idea of preserving things, drying flowers, um, preserving body parts. Um, I was thinking about incorporating wood and metal together. I love the dichotomy of steel and silicone, right? It's the hard substance and the soft, fleshy nature. Like, I, I, I just, there's something about putting the two together that's like, this shouldn't be together, but it is. Um, I have, that my next piece involves a lot of steel, but, but this was talking about preserving one thing while you're holding five other things and kind of looking at something that's inaccessible to you, but still longing for it, even though you have, you know, a lot of it in front of you, kind of forgetting about what you have instead of idolizing somebody that is inaccessible. Um, so this was my, this was a recent piece. I just finished this one like two weeks ago. Um, we're sorry you've reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, we have a hospital bracelet and a steel cage, again, talking about trying to ex access the steel cage, this hard cage that, you know, just trying to do it with brute force is impossible, trying to reach something that is gone forever and you can never get it back. And I think that's something that I, I, I love talking about longing and yearning. And I, I that was reminds me of a funny meme about yearning. Um, it was like Seinfeld, I don't know. Uh, do you ever yearn? Do you lay up and yearn? I yearn. Um, <laughs> a lot of my work talks about yearning. Um, I've been collaborating with an artist in London, which is how I've been gaining some contacts in London, uh, Petite Doll. 
She does surrealist portraits, and we've been collaborating on a few pieces, and one that I recently made is called Flush Vinyl. Um, I basically molded my face while I was smiling, and then demolded it, and put my face made out of clay on a vinyl record, made a mold of that, and put it on a record player. And it's actually, I mean, people love it. I mean, it's been in multiple galleries. I kind of made it for somebody else, and but I, I still put all the love and care into it that I put into everything else, and I, and I think it shows. I mean, in person, it's so much more visceral than the photos, like a professor of mine, a previous professor of mine saw it and was like, that in person is way more powerful. And so I, I just think my work has a lot of power in person rather than um, in photos, as you can see. So I made another piece in 2022 that's called Makeout Machine. Again, I love robotics and like the the, the juxtaposition of metal and silicone and um, I was really talking about femininity and like the 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 aspects of femininity like she's in her ho phase like I was in a ho phase and I was like talking about how women are used as these sex objects but not really given the time of day when it comes to professional life or like their ideas or you know I made this piece when I was working at a really abusive uh, job where my boss would make me get him beers every day and like it was just very like not a good place to work and I just thought about my role in the world and how women are treated and thought of as these these objects in society uh, this was a piece I made uh, around New Year's 2021 2022 um, basically I put myself into a tube um, and the the text on the tube is variations of I'm working so hard to get better I'm better I'm better I'm better I'm better and I've been through a lot of treatments, um, I've been through a lot of therapy, and it always feels like I'm doing better, but then I don't feel like I'm doing better, and it's kind of just like putting myself into this box and saying, I'm doing better, I'm doing better, I'm doing better, and, you know, again, steel, silicone, I love that combination. This is another piece, I was kind of moving away from silicone, I wanted to do something different. Um, there was a local show in Cleveland and I made this for it, it was about occult, so I was thinking about like witches and wizards and whatever. I didn't really follow the prompt. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing about life at school. Like you kind of have to just do whatever you want and like shoehorn it into what you're supposed to be doing because then you'll never do what you want to do, and you're instead you're doing something else that somebody else is telling you to do. Um, so I made this plaster bust of my chest. And I was really thinking about how paint wears and how memories wear as we kind of get older and we, you know, we remember things but they're kind of fuzzy and like the aging of old buildings. I was working in an old warehouse at the time and I, and I would look at the paint and be like, there's lead paint in there, I know it. Um, <laughs> but, but the textures, the textures of the walls were very uh, fascinating to me and I wanted to incorporate that on my body uh, my newest piece, I made an arcade game. Um, this is called The Love Tester. And so the viewer, wood, steel, aluminum, incandescent bulbs, 3D printed parts, acrylic paint, electrical components. I built everything from scratch. Um, it's been a long six months. I just finished it. I released it on Valentine's Day on Instagram because I was like, what a better time because you'll see. Um, so the viewer inserts a quarter. They grab the metal handle that supposedly measures their love force or their fate, um, and then they press the button, and it lands on die alone every single time. So, <laughs> yeah, it lands on die alone every time because um, I basically wanted to tell the world, you know, you may be happy on Valentine's Day, but your fate is that we all die alone. Um, I don't know. I've been very depressed lately, and I wanted, I, I don't know. 
Um, I've been thinking a lot about dying and dying alone and, and basically the ramifications of that. And, you know, the idea of having like a fun carnival, I've been doing a lot of research into old boardwalk games and penny arcade games. Um, and this is actually based on a love tester that was in a Max and Irma's when I was 10 years old, we used to go there every week and there would be this love tester and I would be like, oh, this is going to tell me who I'm going to end up with or tell me how much attractiveness I have. And I would always like, I grew up very hopeless romantic. I've always been a hopeless romantic and just like looking up at this machine that could tell me how valuable I was to another person was so fascinating to me. And I've actually, I, this the sign up top, the wooden sign that I cut on the CNC um, is actually based on the sign from the original Love Tester. It's actually like the same design. I just changed the little, it says text, test your sex appeal on the original one, but I was like, I don't like that. I'm gonna change it. Um, now I'll talk a little bit about my process. Um, I've been working a lot with electronics recently and it's been the death of me. Um, I'm not very good at electronics. I'm not an engineer, but like it interests me to a point where I'm willing to suffer for my art. Um, a lot of Googling Arduino Reddit posts and just like trying to make things work no matter what. Um, so back in August, I, I started coming up with this idea for the love tester and I started wiring it. I'm like, this is gonna be so easy. And then six months later, I'm still T troubleshooting it and, bug and debugging it. Um, there seems to be some electrical issue, but I made a model out of cardboard, and then slowly but surely, I moved on to actually having a physical object. Uh, I work in the wood shop at Cleveland Institute of Art, and luckily I have access to all of their equipment, so I'm, of course I'm going to take full advantage of it. I mean, who, who wouldn't? Um, so there's me demonstrating it to a couple people there. And as you can see, they're mystified. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 I don't know what to say. The, the CNC has been a great tool learning that because I had never really worked with the CNC. I'd used it once at my uh, during my undergraduate at CIA, but actually now like being in charge of the wood shop and like being in the wood shop, like working there, like I can be like, oh, I can use whatever I want. I can learn whatever I want. Like, I kind of have to know how to use it for students. Um, so moving back to inescapable self. So on the your your left, we have the clay, the monster clay. If anybody was in the class today, monster clay. Um, I basically built this like. 50 to 60 pound rock of monster clay. There's a foam form in the middle, so there's probably about two inches of clay all around the surface of it. But I had to mold pretty much all of my body, and I kind of just stuck it together in a meatball where I felt like the composition was, was adequate. And then I made an epoxy and fiberglass mold of that. And then what I did was I painted silicone all over the inside, and then I had this skin, and I was like, okay, all right, what do I have to do with this skin? So I put fiberglass on the inside so it would have some kind of shell to hug and be around, so I attached that to the fiberglass, and this is the, the skin when I was punching the hair into the eyebrows and the eyelashes. Um, that's a process shot of when I was painting. I felt it looked like uh, raw chicken breasts. And so I took a picture of it and I was like, it doesn't look like a raw chicken. I mean, kind of. Um, sometimes you think things and then you like go back and you're like, that's wrong. Um, and here's a photo of me punching hair. I actually borrowed hair from a coworker and I was like, your hair is like nice for eyelashes. Can you like cut me some of your hair? Um, I ask a lot of people for hair and people actually give it to me and I'm like, this is weird, right? Like, I mean, I'm using it for art, but like, I don't know, I like hair. Um, I'll use my own hair sometimes. Like I'll just chop off the ends and use it for like eyebrows or whatever, like the vinyl record. I 
use my own hair for everything. Um, it's a nice way to just chop off your split ends and use them for art, and then you're good. You don't have to get a haircut. Um, so what I do to basically make hands is instead of, hands are really hard. You know, you have a lot of curves, you have a lot of undercuts, and what people instinctively do is like, okay, I'm gonna wrap my hand in silicone, right? But the hard part comes when you need to pull your hand out and pour stuff in, right? Because it's, feet are even harder because you can't, your foot bends at the ankle, right? So you kind of have to do a two-part mold, one on the back, one on the front, one on the back. I don't know if any of you know what I'm talking about. If you're taking the mold making class, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, a two-part mold. Um, so what I do is use alginate for my molds. Um, I'll mix up some alginate, which is an algae-based powder, and then it turns solid, kind of like jello. Um, but it's temporary. Usually I can only get one casting out of it. It's very rippable. So what I do is I uh, stick my hand, get in position and alginate, wait like 10 minutes in this cold goo, and then it'll solidify. I'll pull it out, then, our, then I'll pour in the silicone, wait a couple hours, and then there's my hand. Um, I usually airbrush my, my, my skin. Um, I've kind of I've done a lot of this silicone painting and I've, I've, every time I think I'm getting better and then I make a dumb mistake and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not getting any better, but I don't know, I, I love skin. I love that everybody's skin behaves differently in terms of the amount of veins that you can see and the, the tendons moving in the skin and it's so fragile but also very tough and it's like the biggest organ in our body that can heal itself and like it's crazy. It can be crazy. Um, anyways, I love hands. Um, so here's a picture of me with inescapable self for scale. Um, yeah, I like, I like the concept of gore and violence is okay for but I try not to use gore and violence for violence sake. Like if I have to make a sculpture that's bloody, I wanna make sure it's bloody for a reason. I wanna make sure that I'm not just doing gratuitous violence and injury. I do love gratuitous nudity, I will say. Um, I, I, more people have seen my boobs than I want to, but that's okay. Um, and I think I'm going to wrap it up I have an Instagram, which I post a lot of things on, somewhat annoyingly to my followers. Um, I also post art there. I have a website. You know, you can see stuff that wasn't in here. So you can see like the secret, secret archive of my work. Um, you can see all my video work too. I didn't include any today because I thought I would have like 20 minutes and I'm supposed to do with 45 minutes. Um, I would have definitely made this longer. I appreciate each and every one of you for coming here to see me, um, and thank you for letting me bear my soul to you, um, because I try to do that through my art. Each piece that I create is me taking a piece of my soul and showing it to the world and being like, I'm vulnerable as shit right now. Like, and I think that's a really hard thing to do. It is for me. Um, I was super nervous coming up here and like doing this, but like, it's my art, you know? It's just me, you know? Hopefully you like what you see. Maybe if you didn't, that's okay too. Um, but thank you, and we'll open up for questions, I think. Yeah.